important to <coughs> review some of the mitzvahs that we're very familiar with. And as we grow and as we mature, try to perhaps attain some deeper understanding or at least different perspectives in those mitzvahs. One of the mitzvahs, of course, that we encounter in this week's parsha is the mitzvah of Birkas HaMozin. Ve'achalta v'savotu ve'rachta Hashem elokecha la'aretz ha'teva asher nosan loch. This mitzvah consists of primarily four brachas. The first three, according to most Rishonim, the mashmos of the Gemara as well, is that the first three, the brach of Azon HaSakol, Ala Oretz, as well as Vnei Yerushalayim, are bracha is Mida Araisa, which are darshin from Sukkim. The fourth bracha is a bracha of Hatoi Vametiv, which was Mesukim, which was established later when it came to the Kvura of the Haruge Beta, which we will discuss in a moment. And generally speaking, we understand that Birchas HaMazon, on its simplest level, is of course a Birchas Hanenin of sorts. It's thanking the Rabbani Shalom for the food that we just ate, which causes many people to ask the following question. Why then are we making a bracha al ha'aretz ha Why are we making a bracha al ha'aretz v'ala mazayin? We understand that we make the bracha on the food, hazon es hakol. But why the bracha on the land of Eretz Yisrael? Certainly it makes sense when one is in Eretz Yisrael, one's eating the produce of Eretz Yisrael. But when one's not in Eretz Yisrael, so why are we making a bracha on Eretz Yisrael when we eat? What is the banana that I had today, which grew in America, or the orange which grew in Florida, what does that have to do with Eretz Yisrael? So much so that in fact it seems like the Iker bracha, the primary bracha of Birkas Hamazain is in fact the bracha of Al Ha'aretz. How do I know? Because we know that when Chazal come and they make a bracha, which is almost a summary of many brachas, we call it the Me'ain Shalosh, right? The bracha of Al Hamichya or Al Haperos. These brachas are Me'ain Shalosh, meaning they're supposed to capture the essence of the entirety of Birkas Hamazain. And if that is the case, we only could assume that if we're going to capture the essence, Chazal are going to sign off. The crux of the bracha is going to be the primary bracha of the three brachas. And in fact, which bracha do we use to highlight in the final bracha of Al Hamichya, which is the Chasim of the bracha of Al Hamichya, of course, it's Al Ha'aretz Al Hamichya. That means we didn't use the bracha of Hazan Es Hakol as the primary bracha. We didn't use the bracha of Nei Yerushalayim. We use the bracha of Al Ha'aretz, and probably that is the Pashtus Hakra as well. The Pshutay Shel Mikra is Ve'achalta V'savatu Ve'rachta Hashem Elokecha Al Ha'aretz Ha'Toiva Asher Nasan Lach. That means that the primary aspect of Birkas Hamazon seems to be on Eretz. Eretz Yisrael. So if it's on Eretz Yisrael, what does that have to do with the eating that we do outside of Eretz Yisrael? Perhaps one should argue that the mitzvah of Birkas HaMazen should be a mitzvah tliyas ba'aretz, like we discussed last night. There are many mitzvahs which are only be only kept in Eretz Yisrael. Perhaps the mitzvah of Birkas HaMazen, if you take the psukim literally, v'achalta v'savotu v'rachta Hashem elokecha la'aretz ha'toiva asher nasan lach, we're blenching the rabbanishim, we're giving a bracha to the Rabbanu on Eretz Yisrael. That means if I eat the produce of Eretz Yisrael, I should bench. Perhaps if I don't eat the produce of Eretz Yisrael, I shouldn't bench. But the mashmalos of the Gemara and all the Rishonim is, of course, that Birkas HaMazan is deraisa both inside Eretz Yisrael and outside Eretz Yisrael. So what does Eretz Yisrael have to do? It's a beautiful thing. We thank the Rabbanu of Eretz Yisrael. But what does it have to do with the Achila that I just ate where no, not, none of the food came from Eretz Yisrael? So there are many that explain based on the Ramban and that Beret in this week's parsha as well. And they explained, based on the words of those Rishonim, that the Torah tells us at the end of the parsha, Eretz Asher Hashem Elokecha Doireisho Yisrael Tamid, Enei Hashem Elokecha Ba, Meireishis Hashano Ve'ad Achris Shano, the Rabbanu Shalom is Mashgiach, so to speak, on Eretz Yisrael, on a level which is beyond his Hashkocha on other lands. Rashi on the spot says, What do you mean? Asher Hashem Elokecha Doireisho Yisrael. We know the Rabbanu Shalom watches over all lands. So Rashi says, Yes, but the primary reason that the Rabbanu Shalom is watching over lands 
is over Eretz Yisrael. Derech Agav, almost, parenthetically, once it, tangentially, once the Rebbeinu Shalom comes and watches over Eretz Yisrael, so then he subsumes, he watches over the other lands as well. Says Rebbeinu Bechaya, Eretz Asher Hashem Elokecha Deresh Yisrael Tomer, Al Derech Apshat, like Rashi says, Iker Hashka Choso Be'eretz Ahi, Ki Bevadei Kola Eretz Kola Eretz Yisrael. Maybe the primary Hashgacha that the Rebbeinu Shalom has is Eretz Yisrael. But of course, he watches over all lands. Aval ha'inyan says, Rebbeinu Bechaya, I will go on to take it a step further. Aval ha'inyan he ha'iker ha'drisha v'ha'ashkoch ha'sham u'misham mispashetes l'shar ha'aratzois ke'inyan ha'lev be'odom sh'u'nosan be'emtza ha'gov sh'u'iker ha'chiyos Umisham hachiyus mispasha lishar ha'ivarim. Says Rabbi Nechai, it's not simply that the Rabbi Nechai watches over other lands almost as a detail. And when he comes to watch over Eretz Yisrael. But it goes much deeper than that as well. The chiyos, the vitality, the growth, the Rabbanu Shalom provides the entire world comes via Eretz Yisrael. The bracha which the Rabbanu Shalom provides, Africa and the United States of America and Switzerland, all of that bracha, all of that chiyos, all of that vitality, all of that growth comes via Eretz Yisrael, comes through Eretz Yisrael. So yes, it's the land which the Rebbeinu Shalom is mashkiach over. Eretz Asher Hashem Elokecha Doreshos Atamir Einei Hashem Elokecha Bamer Reishos Ashana Varach Reshana. He looks over the entire globe and decides what the entire globe needs, what brachas the entire globe needs. But all of that bracha is channeled through in his spiritual realm, channeled through Eretz Yisrael. If that is the case, come that Chaynim and say that's why. No matter what you're eating, no matter where it grew from, no matter where this produce came from, you have to bench the Rabbanu Shalom, you have to make a brach on Eretz Yisrael, because whatever you're eating, wherever it grew, that all is coming from bracha, as says Rabbeinu Bechaya, which was bracha that came through the brachas of Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, yes, every single achila that a person does, on any produce, really one has to bench, one has to thank the Rabbanu Shalom for Eretz Yisrael. But I believe that we have a different perspective as well, which is suggested by Rameyer Simcha, which perhaps could <coughs> enhance our understanding every time we bench as well. Because we focus for the most part on the bracha of al ha'aretz. And we said, if I'm eating a banana that came from the United States, why am I making a bracha on Eretz Yisrael? So perhaps we could understand based on the understanding that was just presented. But then we could ask a question further. What's the third bracha of benching? Uvenei Yerushalayim Yerakoidish b'mhei rabi Right? We ask the Rabbanu Shalom, b'nei b'racham of Yerushalayim. Why am I asking the Rabbanu Shalom why I thank you, the Rabbanu Shalom, for Yerushalayim Ircha, because I just ate. It's a beautiful thing. Shemayna Esri, of course, Yerushalayim Ircha Baracham Im Tashav. But what does it have to do with the be- eating that I just did? I just had a nice sandwich for lunch, and now I'm going to all of a sudden thank the Rabbanu Shalom. You want to tell me Hazan Esakol, because he gave me the sandwich? I understand. You want to tell me Al Ha'aretz Vala Muslim because all the produce is gives, the blessing of produce is given via Eretz Israel? I understand. But what does it have to do with Yerushalayim? As from Meir Simcha, what even bothers him even more is the fourth bracha. Now you're correct. The fourth bracha is not a bracha mida araisa, but if certainly Chazal established the fourth bracha, it has to fit in somewhere in the context of benching. Why are we making a bracha on Hagruge Beitar? That those that were killed on Beitar, they weren't given to burial for a long, long time, and they did, their bodies didn't decompose, and finally a melech acher, the Yerushalmi says, was established, and this melech allowed for those that were killed in Beitar to be buried. So we're going to make a bracha called Hatoy v'hametiv for those that were allowed to be buried on Beitar. But why are we establishing this bracha? What does that have to do with benching? This is going to be the fourth bracha of benching? What is the fact that there was some sort of miracle? It doesn't seem like the greatest miracle in our history, the fact that people were slaughtered and now we finally get to 
finally get to bury them. But for some reason, we're establishing a bracha specifically on this. But not only are we establishing a bracha specifically on this one particular miracle, which seemingly had an effect for that generation, but the effect didn't go beyond that generation. So why we're establishing a bracha for this in particular and it is in and of itself a question. But why are we establishing it as a part of benching? What does it have to do with benching Esk of Meir Simcha? Why are we making Hatoy Vahametiv at the end of benching? And where else do we make this bracha of Hatoy Vahametiv? We make this bracha, we know it's a Birchas Hayayin. What does the bracha of Yayin have to do with Hatoy Vahametiv? We don't make a bracha on anything else. We don't make a bracha when a nice, beautiful, another meat comes out, a very nice meat that I didn't have. We had one steak and now an even better steak comes out. Why don't we make a Hatoy Vahametiv? It's only on Yayin. So we have a bracha which is only on Yayin, and the bracha, the text of the bracha which is only on Yayin, is the same bracha that we have for the Haruge Beitar, which for some reason we annex to the end of benching. What is going on over here? What's this bracha of the Hatoiv Vehametiv? Explains the Meir Simcha beautifully that really benching is much more than just thanking the Rabbanu Shalom for the food that you just ate. Benching Birkas Hamazain is a moment where we take and thank the Rabbanu Shalom for all of Klali Yisrael's development, for the entirety of Klali Yisrael's history, from the beginning of our time as a nation, all the way through our development at Hayyim Hazet. It's not a very myopic thanking of the Rabbanu Shalom just now for this sandwich that I ate. We take a step back and we thank the Rabbanu Shalom for choosing Klal Yisrael, for taking Klal Yisrael from stage to stage to stage throughout our development. Explains to Meir Simcha. The first part of benching, of course, Hazon HaSakol was established by Moshe Rabbeinu in the Midbar, thanking the Rabbanu Shalom for the Mon. That's what the Gemara says. Moshe Tikein Birkas Hazon. We thank the Rabbanu Shalom for the food that we're eating, but we're also supposed to have in mind the fact that the Rabbanu Shalom took care of us 40 years in the Midbar. That was a stage in Klal Yisrael's development. Hazon Es HaKol captures and thanks the Rabbanu Shalom for that stage of our development. Then after the stage of the 40 years in the Midbar, we come into the land of Eretz Yisrael. The second bracha of benching is thanking the Rabbanu Shalom for that stage, giving us our own land, giving us the bracha of Eretz Yisrael, giving us the tremendous beauty and bounty of Eretz Yisrael. That is a stage in, Eretz, in Kali Yisrael's progress, Kali Yisrael's development. We're thanking the Rabbanu Shalom first on the 40 years of the Midbar, then as we enter Eretz Yisrael. But even after we go on to Eretz Yisrael, there's another stage of our development. We build Beis HaMikdash, we build the Mizbeach. It wasn't until many, many, many years later, until David HaMelech, until Shalom HaMelech comes and we finally have a Beis HaMikdash. So we thank the Rabbanu Shalom for the time in the Midbar taking care of us, bringing us to Eretz Yisrael, developing our own homeland, and then creating a Beis HaMikdash with a Mizbeach that we could do the Avoida. This is the benching, the entire progress, the entire process of Klal Yisrael, taken from a nation out of Mitzrayim, developing into a nation in Eretz Yisrael with Beis HaMikdash, and of course with a Mizbeach to serve the Rebbe Nisham. But then came unfortunately the Churban. And at that point in time, Klal Yisrael at the time didn't know what was going to be. Kal Yisrael didn't know what the future had held. This was a new era for them. We don't have our Eretz Yisrael. We don't have Beis Hamikdash. We don't have Yerushalayim. And the time in Kal Yisrael at that time were very dejected. Kal Yisrael didn't know what was going to be. But what uplifted Klal Yisrael? At what point in history did Klal Yisrael say, even though we're in Golos, even though we don't have Beis HaMikdash, even though we don't have Karbanas, it is so clear to us that the Rabbanu Shalom is still being mashgiach over us and taking care of us and that He will bring us out of here, says the Meshach that's what occurred. That was the paradigm shift that Klal Yisrael experienced when Beitar, when the Haruge Beitar were given to be buried. After terrible devastation, and Klal Yisrael, these dead are, are defeated, and there are those that aren't given to Kfuru, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, for no apparent political reason, a Melech Acher is come, a Melech rises, and he says, I'm going to give the Haruge Beitar Kfuru, out of nowhere. And we see that the body didn't decompose at all. That was a miracle says the Meshachachma Klal Yisrael at that moment saw Kasher Ra'u Ki Oma 
Nigzar Melech Chesed Echad, V'Nigzar Aleim Kvura, Hevinu Klal Yisrael, that moment understood, it wasn't a tremendous Yeshua, it wasn't a Geula, we weren't brought back into Eretz Yisrael, we don't have Beis Amikdash, but at that moment we understood that we're going to make it. Ki Yisrael Se'echad Ben Shivim Ze'ev, and we're like a little sheep amongst 70 nations of the world, 70 worlds, but we are going to make it because the Rabbi Hashem is taking care of us. When the waves of the ocean are trying to drown us, maybe behester upon him, but he will use the rulers of the world to save us and be able to influence their hearts. Leave malachim beyond Hashem to take care of us, and that's the bracha of Hatoiva Ametiv. The bracha of Hazan is our time in the midbar. The bracha of Ala Aretz was when Baruch brought us into Eretz Yisrael. The bracha of Bayne Birachim of Yerushalayim was our glory days, the time of Beis Hamikdash and Mizbeach. The bracha Hatoiva Ametiv wasn't established till later because that bracha is the time of Kali Yisrael in Golis. Time that we're in Golis, but a time that we appreciate very clearly and very easily. We see the Yad Hashem, and we know that. And we're going to make it out of Golas as well. Says Rameir Simcha, this is why we make Hatoif Ametiv on Yayin specifically. Listen to Rameir Simcha, he says, could you imagine such a thing? We're strew, spread out entire, the, amongst the nations of the world. And we don't drink wine with them. And we don't eat their bread. We don't associate them what, with them whatsoever. That's what the Gemara says in Megillah. They told Achashverosh that if a fly flows, f- falls into the wine, they'll still drink the wine. They'll take out the fly and drink the wine. If your little pinky t- Touches the wine, they're not going to drink it anymore. Says Rameir Simcha, Akob, Shaoichlem, Mipitam, Vishaisim, Yenam, Ain Galusim Galus. If you were willing to assimilate, so that's not real Galus, Ava Yisrael, Shain Oichlem, Mipitam, Vain Shaisim, Yenam, Vishrael, Shim Noga, Akam, Biyeno, Osser, Leilishtos. We don't associate with them whatsoever. We don't go out to drink with them. We won't drink their wine. We won't drink wine in their presence. Umadiyah, Kaisa, Gimme, Pa'am, the Cholzais, and even so, we refuse used to become a part of them. We still survive. We're still surviving. We're still thriving. This is only the Yad Hashem. And this is the bracha of Atoiv HaMetiv. The bracha of Atoiv HaMetiv is not a bracha on Geula Shlema, but it's a bracha when Klal Yisrael realizes that we are in a Golas, but the Rabbanu Shalom is being mashkiach over us. He's watching over us and we are confident we are going to make it out of a Golas. That realization which Klal Yisrael realized at the time of Haruge Beitar, when they were given to Kfura. The Rabbi has thrown us into Galus, but he has by no stretch of the imagine a nation has he neglected us, has he left us, has he forsaken us. He will come back and he will retrieve us. That is the bracha of Atoi Vametiv. Based on these words of the Meshachachma and Meir Simcha, we have a whole new understanding of benching. When we bench, we're not simply thanking the Rabbi for the food that we just ate, but we're taking an entire Klal Yisrael, the entire evolution of Klal Yisrael, the fact that we were Avadim in Mitzrayim all the way until the present, and we're thanking the Rabbi for the entire process. It's a moment where, rather than become greedy, rather than become all, uh, all rather than become entirely consumed by our physical wealth, V'ram levavecha says the Torah v'achalta v'savatu v'erachta es Hashem elokecha. When you eat and you're susceptible to that mindset and perhaps vulnerable to that mindset of v'ram levavecha, then I want you to thank me, not just on the food that you ate, but I want you to thank me on the entire history of Klal Yisrael, the history starting from Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim all the way up till today, the time of Hatoi Vametiv, where we express our confidence that the Rebbe Shalom has not forsaken us and will once again bring us back to the time of Allah Oretz Ve'al Mazan and Boine Birachamov Yerushalayim. Amen.